We'll get to this formula in a second. Let me explain what this is about. Declining balance is a kind of trying to get a more realistic model for how things um, depreciate, right? So here we said every year it just loses $10,000, right? One of the reasons why accountants um, and tax agents and all that kind of thing would do this is because it's really easy to work out. It's very, very simple, and that's why this is the most common way, okay? But it's a little more realistic, particularly if you have something for like decades, if it's like a really, um, like a hearse or something like that, which you don't just replace every few years. They're very long-term vehicles, right? We want something that doesn't decline the same amount every time, but by a percentage, right? So I want you to picture, don't write this, but suppose you start with your $50,000, right? The first year you lose that 10,000. What is 10,000 as a percentage of this initial value? 20%. It's 20%, very good. $10,000, it's a fifth of this amount, okay? So 20% is like saying, what this becomes the next year is 80% of its original value. Does that make sense? Right? The year has passed, it's now 80%. So now it's $40,000. Okay. Well, if you're using a percentage, it loses that value at the same rate. So you'd say, well, next year, it's gonna lose another 80% of its value. What's 80% of $40,000? You've got a calculator there. What's it gonna do? 32. It's gonna be 32,000, yeah. right? Um, by the way, there's a nice easy trick because these numbers are nice and simple um, to work out that it was $32,000. Have a look at these two numbers. These are the only significant figures in my calculation, right? What is eight times four? 32. It's just 32. So the number I'm gonna get out here is gonna be 32 or 320 or 3,200 or 32,000 or 32 million. Which one of those makes sense? Clearly only 32,000 makes sense, right? So you can use the significant figures to your advantage sometimes. Okay, 32,000. 32,000. I'm going to lose another 80% this time, right? Now, I'm going, to, um, I'm going to get you to start doing this on your calculator, but rather than have to retype it every single time, here's, um, here's what I'm going to do. Follow this carefully. Punch in 50,000 on your calculator and just hit equals, right? Just hit equals. And then what you'll get is uh, 50,000 in the display there. Now what we want to do is just take that answer and multiply it by 80% repeatedly, okay? So if you then say answer times, and you can either go with the decimal equivalent, which is 0 0.8, or you can just type in 80%. When you press equals the first time, it's going to tell you 40 grand, right? Then you press it again, and it's going to do 32. Then you press it again, and it's going to give you the next one, and the next one, and the next one, and the next one. Now I want you to keep pressing it. Can you keep pressing it? Press it quite a few times. Take note of what the number is. Now what I want you to notice is, Wait until it's zero. there's a few things happening. Number one, it's not getting to zero, is it? You've gone way more than five years, and it's not zero yet. Not only that, you see the amount it's dropping each time? Yeah, you pressed it a lot of times, right? Eventually, it does get down to zero, but how many times did you have to press equals to do that? A whole lot of times, probably <laughs> longer than it's practical. Yeah, okay. So what this is called, see how that balance, the amount that the value of the car was? It was getting lower and lower and lower. Can you count it? This is the declining balance of the declining balance of the This is the balance that the car is worth, and it's dropping gradually every time. Now, pick up your pen again now, put your calculator down. What would this graph look like? Every single year we lost 10 grand, right? And yeah. we broke it. <coughs> You're at scientific notation. Scientific notation, hooray. It's giving you, you know, 10 to the negative whatever, okay? Yeah. I want you to notice, right? We can actually put some numbers on here. We still started at 50, right? So <coughs> let's call that 50. And after the first year, we still went to 40, okay? So the first year, everything's, I should be a bit lower. Everything's the same, okay? But then as you depreciate, you went 10,000, you lost 10,000, then you lost 8,000. And then after that, you lost like six and a half thousand. And then you lost increasingly small amounts. By the end, as you were like frantically pressing eagles, you were losing like cents in the dollar, okay? It really slowed down, okay? So therefore, on your graph, here's what's happening. Instead of a straight line, you've got this curved line. Now you should recognize this curved line, right? If I drew the other side, you don't need to draw this, but if I were to draw the other side, see how this gets shallower this way? 
it gets steeper that way. Do you remember this graph? This is an exponential, yeah, exponential graph, except it's backwards because we're not like getting interest on our bank and it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. It's the opposite, it's the opposite and that's why it's decreasing and decreasing. Okay? Which is why, and I pointed this out before when we did compound interest. Now you're ready to look at the formula. See this formula, right? This is the comp, just scroll up, right? Just scroll up and you'll see. I rephrase it, sorry. Wake up. No. There we go. Okay. Here's my declining balance method of depreciation. Look at that. And then just look up to, oh, a little bit further. Look right up to there, see that? Uh, Windows, why are you doing that to me? Okay. There's our compound interest formula. It's the same thing except backwards. Yeah, that's right. See how there's a plus there? That's what makes it increase in value, right? But down here, we've got a negative sign and it's dropping in exactly the same way. Does that make sense? Okay, so remember how we wrote this um, equation for the salvage value on the straight line? Let's write the equation for the salvage value for declining balance. What would S equal to here? Let's look at this formula. I'll come back and zoom in again. It has much the same pieces, okay? Except instead of D, the depreciation, which is the same every year, <laughs> they call it R. Why do you think they call it R? Because it's a rate, it's a percentage, yeah? So I'm going to write uh, that V naught is still 50,000. I've got one take away. Okay, now you'll notice as well. They say this, which is helpful. It says depreciation rate per period expressed as a decimal. So I'm not going to write any percent here. What should I write? <coughs> Zero point. Ah, 0.2. Oh, the actual, the, the thing that's being lost is the 20%, but you told me at the beginning. And then 80% comes from when I do one takeaway 0 0.2. That's 0 0.8. Does that make sense? Yeah, I just um, and then, yeah, it's fine. Um, and then what's up here, this is just fine. however long you're doing it, right? So it could be five years, it could be 10 years, 15, 20, 50. That's it. Um, now, just like with this, you know how things have different names? Um, this declining balance method of depreciation also has different names, I'm going to tell you, yeah. I was just going to ask, so if it's hard, you can still do the same thing as you do for the interest? Sorry, can you say that again? Because it was like half a year? It was yeah, like, like six months, every six months or every yeah, quarter? Yeah, absolutely. The thing is the compound exactly thing. right. So let's, for example, let's suppose, I mean, we said 20% every year. 20% every year? So let's go with six months, every six months, okay? I would change this, I would change this. You're not losing 20% every single six months, right? What are you losing instead of 20%? 10 yeah, it's 0 0.1, isn't it, right? But you're doing it not every year, you're doing it twice a year, like that. Does that make sense? Um, if you were crazy and you wanted to depreciate every single day, you wouldn't divide by two, you'd divide by however many days there are in a year. 65.25, 365. And then you'd say, well, I'm doing it every day, so I'm going to have 365 times the number of years you've got. Okay? So, yes, if you would change that period. Now, I was just going to finish by telling you, um, just like this has different names, um, declining balance has two other names as well. Sometimes it's called reducing balance, which is much the same. The other thing is also called, uh, and this is helpful, I'll point out why in a second. The other thing is called is diminishing, diminishing value. I mean, they're, um, they're synonyms, really. But the thing that's nice about that is you, if you come back to the formula and data sheet, where is it? When we talk about this stuff here, present value and future value, uh, this idea of just tell me what it's worth, tell me the balance. Uh, present value, future value, if the future value is lower, we call it a diminishing value. Okay.